three extremely valuable real estate investing lessons I have learned after almost 10 years in this business and how you could take these three lessons, apply them and have a tremendous amount of success. That's going to be the topic of today's REI weekly lesson. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Greg Helbeck. I've been a full-time real estate entrepreneur now for almost 10 years. I've done well over 225 deals and every piece of information you're going to hear on this podcast is real world practical information. This is not regurgitated theory out of a book. So the goal of this podcast is to share what I've learned with you so you can benefit from it. And if you do get value from this show, if you could do me a favor, subscribe on YouTube and like the video, or if you're listening to the audio, do me a favor, share the show on social media. That's how we keep growing the show on a weekly basis. So what are three lessons that I've learned after doing this business for almost 10 years that have made me millions of dollars that can make you millions of dollars if you're consistent and persistent? The three lessons are this. Number one, getting really good at marketing. Number two, getting really good at underwriting. And three, being really persistent with your follow-up. And I'm gonna break these three lessons down on this episode. So the first one, marketing, right? This business at the end of the day, if you're going direct to seller, is not the real estate business. It's the marketing business. But if you really understand this business, it is a marketing and sales operation. Real estate happens to be the widget that you're buying or selling or buying or renting, but nothing happens unless you get good at marketing. So what are some marketing channels that I've really found worked over the years? Number one, direct mail marketing. This has been our best channel by a long shot because of the scalability and the predictability of it, right? You can mail a very small amount of people and get results. You can mail a large group of people and get results. You could turn it up and turn it down. You could control who you send the message to. I love the channel for those reasons. And another reason is that you can obviously get people to call you versus calling them, right? Someone calls into your postcard, generally they're going to have an interest in selling their house or else they would have thrown that in the trash. So direct mail has been just a great scalable channel for our company and taking the time over the last really six or seven years that I've been mailing extensively has really produced phenomenal results. So I committed to getting good at direct mail back in like 2018. I studied it. I read books on it. I obviously took action and I learned from experts and I've always tested my campaigns. And I could say as of today, I am an absolute expert when it comes to getting deals via direct mail. I've even taught classes on how to do this. So it's been very fruitful. The second marketing channel that I've always loved is a different type of channel, much more applicable for people who have a lower budget. And it's basically the art of targeted cold calling and texting, not just calling and texting everybody, but being really strategic with who you actually pursue. Usually in this case, it's like people who are on multiple lists who are hard to get in touch with. I call it like a deep skip trace. And this channel has been phenomenal for us. And this is basically when you go out, you get a list, then you find, for example, the tax delinquent list. And then out of that list, there's maybe thousands of people on there. You go out and you find all the vacant properties on that list that are also tax delinquent, and then you have a sub list. And then you take that list, which is in this case is a vacant tax delinquent, and then you find all the inherited properties, right? You look for like the estate of, and you call those owners and relatives. These properties are really good deals if you can get them, because a lot of the times what you'll realize is that the people who own these properties, usually in this case, the heirs, they were just going to give the property back for taxes or for foreclosure, whatever the case might be. So you can pretty much get these deals for a ridiculous discount because the people were going to just give them back to the bank or the county anyways. And if you can go in there and demonstrate that you're not a knucklehead and you can actually solve their problem, you can get some great properties. And I did a deal actually through this channel, made over $350,000 on that one deal by calling an heir on an inherited property in California. And they sold me the property for 275 grand. I resold it for 750 grand. And at the end of the day, with all the expenses and everything, I made 350 grand. So it can be a great channel. Third marketing channel, I would recommend and you get good at is online marketing, which is pretty broad. That consists of usually three things, pay per lead, which is when you buy leads from a company for a fixed fee, pay per click, which is when you actually pay Google to have your website rank at the top. And when people come to that website, they click on it, you get leads that way. The third way is SEO, which is basically organically ranking your website for certain keywords. But anyway, when you can take these three online channels and you can be strategic with them, you can get some pretty good results. Generally, what I've seen with these is that you have more of a motivated prospect coming to you because they're seeking you out and searching you. So the third channel I would recommend, which consists of usually three sub pillars, pay per lead, pay per click, and then SEO. So getting good at marketing is less than number one that I've learned that has been extremely rewarding once I came in to get good at marketing. The second skill 
that you need to get good at if you want to be a successful investor is you got to get good at underwriting, which just means analyzing a deal for the value and what you can pay for it. So a lot of real estate investors might be good at marketing. They might understand how to get leads, but they really drop the ball when it comes to underwriting and analyzing. They don't understand what is a property truly worth? What is it worth in the fixed up value, aka the ARV? What is it worth in the as is condition? What would be a good offer? What's the most you can pay? Is this even a deal you want to make an offer on? So if you want to get good at this, my recommendation is you pick one area and master values in that area. And then if you want to ever expand, you rinse and repeat, right? You don't want to try to underwrite properties all across the country because it's just going to confuse you because each market is going to be different. Real estate is a local business at the end of the day. So the skill you got to really get good at is looking at deals and underwriting. And the way you do that is you get a lot of leads. And if you don't have the MLS, which is what realtors use, you can use Redfin nowadays. You can use Zillow. You can find sold comparables on those websites. You can find active properties. You can find pending properties. So get good at this because when you get leads, you really need to know what those properties are going to be worth when you go sell them or if you go rent them. And this is a skill I see a lot of people really fall behind and they don't understand it. And then the third skill, which in my opinion, puts all the other skills together is persistence. Persistence could be in many different subjects in real estate. But in this case, I'm just going to use persistence in the example of dealing with sellers. A lot of people who call you, they're not going to be ready to sell right now. They're calling in, they're interested, they want some information. And if you're not persistent with following up with these people, when they do sell, it's going to be to your competition. You have to understand, number one, you have to persist with the right people. You shouldn't be following up with unmotivated sellers because you're going to go nowhere. But you have to have a system in place to identify the leads that are actually motivated that are going to sell in the future. And you have to have a good follow-up plan to stay in touch with them so that whenever they're ready to sell, you're going to be there to buy their house. So persistence is absolutely key in any business, in anything in life, because a lot of things don't just happen off the jump. And when you can identify a good lead and you can build a relationship with them over time, when they're ready to sell, it's going to be to you. I bought a house one time. I think I was in touch with that seller for two or three years. And eventually they sold me the house and it was a great deal. I made $60,000 on that deal because every single month I was in touch. And when the timing was right, they were ready to go. And that persistence got me that deal. So the three lessons to summarize this, number one, you got to get good at marketing. Number two, you got to get good at analyzing and underwriting deals. And number three, you got to be persistent in general, but mainly with sellers because that's where the opportunities are. If you get good at those three skills, can't make any guarantees on this podcast, but there's a pretty good chance you'll be a successful real estate investor. If you got value from this podcast, please do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, share the audio on social media. And if you're local to Delaware, Seattle, New York, San Diego, or Reno, and you have a property, you either want to wholesale to me or wholesale with me, send me an email, greg at velocityhousebuyers.com. I'll see you on the next podcast.